Hey, it's Truefly here. We're back. This time we're going to be taking a look at Affliction, Salem 1692. This one's from a local game designer from DPH Games. We had him on the podcast recently. We even talked about this game. I played a really early prototype version of this a long time ago and posted it on my blog. And uh, finally got a chance to get in and play this newer, more updated version. Just want to mention that what I have here is actually a prototype copy, so things might be a little bit different in the final version, but I think they're pretty close to being where they're going to be, and not too much is going to change, just the quality of some co components and things may uh, be upgraded before the final version, so keep that in mind as well. And uh, we'll get in and take a look at it. So the game itself takes place in Salem, Massachusetts during the Salem Witch Trials. And you're going to take uh, control of various families and factions. And the goal is to bring specific people into your circle of, of friends. And then use the influence that you gain from them being a part of your circle to accuse and eventually arrest your various rivals. To basically eliminate them from power, seize their lands and their money. Some people are affiliated with the village, some people are affiliated with the town, and the game supports uh, two to four players. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to get one of these boards, and you're going to have it set in front of you on the table. Then each player is going to start with one of these starting colonists. They say starter colonist right on them. They all have different abilities down here on the bottom. And you're going to pick and choose which one of these you want. And they're going to go over here as the first member of your circle. Whichever ones of these are not chosen are going to be shuffled back into our main deck of colonist cards. And then they get put aside for later use. There are two special colonist cards. They're different, a little bit different color than all the rest of them. For uh, Increase Mather, the minister and uh, the governor's wife, Mary Spencer Hill. These two are actually going to go, you take the bottom six cards off the uh, colonist desk, they get randomly shuffled into there, and then those get put on the bottom of the colonist deck. If either one of those comes up during the game, it immediately ends the game. So it gives you kind of a timer that someplace in the last eight cards, the game is going to end. There's also a prominent colonist deck. These are the more important named people that were around uh, at the time. All of the colonists are color coded here at the top. They also match the colors on the player boards. So you can see the Porter family there. The uh, Proctor family, not all of them have the same last name though, which is why the color coding is on there. And then we have the Putnams. These are also going to get a set aside for now. After every player has their starting setup, these get moved aside. And we're going to set up the rest of our board. So you have the esteemed board here, which is actually the going to be the playing board. This is where you're going to set your workers to uh, decide what you're going to be doing with them. And I'll get a closer up of that so you can see it when we get to that. But underneath that you're going to have four of your prominent colonist cards and the deck. And then under that you're going to have four regular colonist cards and the deck. And these are the people that are available currently to either arrest or to recruit into your circle. And you do so by spending influence equal to the number that's up here in the corner. You can use uh, accusation tokens to lower that number for means to arrest them. As well as their spectral evidence, which we'll get to that. And the other thing I kind of skipped over were the grievance cards. These are basically hidden objectives that are going to give you bonus points. Nobody else is going to know what these are. And you get extra vi uh, victory points for arresting these specific colonists, but you lose victory points if anybody else arrests that colonist. So you have to keep these things in mind 
and try to protect the uh, person at the bottom there while trying to make sure that you're the one who arrests these up here. And those stay hidden from the other players and it's your own little personal bonus points. And the game basically boils down to a worker placement game. You have these little meeples. And uh, you're going to have three in a two player game. You're only going to have two in a uh, three or more player game. And you're going to take turns placing these on the board here. And there's several spots along the board. Only one uh, meeple can be on each of the different spaces. And they start over here and it actually follows a path around through the different people. And that's the order you're going to resolve the things. So when you want to take one of the actions, you put your meeple on the space. You're going to take turns going through that. And then you're going to start at the beginning here and you resolve the effects as you go through. There's various different uh, things that can be done. So at the beginning here, you're going to be meeting up in the streets, which lets you gain one influence and um, place an accusation token on one of the colonists below the uh, board here. The next option here is for Governor William Phillips. You can exonerate, which lets you remove two ac uh, accusation tokens from a colonist. Or you can remove um, additional accusation tokens on top of that by spending uh, one influence per two tokens. Next we have the protection token and the first player token. Whoever goes on that space is going to end up getting the first player token, which gives them the uh, ability to place their pawns first the next turn, as well as a protection token that they can put on any one of the colonists that protects that person from being arrested until that token is moved. Next we move on to the Judge William Stoughton. And I'm sure I'm mispronouncing names, but... And uh, the first one of his spaces allows the colonists to trigger their abilities and generates influence. So you gain influence from all the various colonists that are a member of your circle as well as triggering any or all of their abilities. The next one uh, of his spaces is basically the same thing but it doesn't trigger the abilities. It only generates the influence. You'd use that if somebody took the first one. And then the third one only triggers the abilities but doesn't generate any influence. So ideally you want to be the first person to go there so you can get both but later on, you'll have to make the choice of where you want to go. Next person we have is the Magistrate John Hawthorne. And uh, he's where you go to arrest people. You can arrest people with a plus one to the influence or just a regular arrest. In order to arrest one of the colonists, you have to have at least one of these accusation tokens on them. For each accusation token that's on them, you reduce this number up here by one. That's the amount of influence you need to spend. So in this case, if we have two tokens on there, and uh, William Proctor here is only three, if we were to use be our first person and use this space here, that gives us the arrest with the plus one, we could actually arrest him for nothing, no cost of our own influence. And then he would go into our arrested pile. Once a colonist is arrested, you can no longer use their ability or anything. They basically just count as victory points. Some of the characters like here have this T or a V that designates if they're a uh, villager or townsfolk. And again, depending on the player board you're using, depends on uh, which of those you can bring into your circle. In this case here, Thomas Putnam is also a landowner. If you were to arrest him, you would also get the two victory points for his uh, properties at the end of the game. Our next space on the board here is the Spectral Evidence. Spectral Evidence gives you the Spectral Evidence token, which you can place on any one of the colonists. Once a colonist has the uh, Spectral Evidence token on them, they uh, no longer receive a reputation defense bonus for being part of your uh, circle for the purposes of being arrested. They uh, also don't generate influence and they're unable to use their colonist ability. So. Pretty uh, powerful thing. There's only one space to get that on the board per turn. So you're uh, going to see people fight over that one. Next we move around to Reverend Cotton Mather. And he's going to allow us to place or remove these fear tokens. You can either place one fear token on any colonist and gain two influence. Or you can remove one fear token from any colonist. 
Fear tokens are especially powerful because once they're on a colonist, they start blocking their benefits. Once they have two fear tokens on them, they no longer generate any influence. Once they have three fear tokens on them, they're no longer allowed to use their ability or generate influence. So they're, they kind of work like the spectral evidence, but it takes three of these to get to that point. Still very powerful. The next space is our accuse. And on the um, acquisition space, you get to place two accusation tokens on any colonist, and you gain two influence. Both accusations don't need to be placed on the same colonist, which is another kind of cool thing. So you can spread those out. And the last two spaces are for uh, bringing colonists into your circle. And when you uh, pick those, the, the, this one's a regular one, that one's plus one. And you end up paying the cost in influence up here on the side. It is not affected by acquisition tokens. So if they're on there, he's still going to cost three to bring him into your circle. But you pay your three influence, you would bring him into your circle at that point. So here we have a quick look at our player board setup. We have our initial starter colonist. We have our player board. We have our hidden grievance down here. We have our two workers to place on the main board. And we have our couple influence that we start with. Now depending on which choices you made on the board and where you place your workers, you can have different actions that we just kind of went through real quick. And uh, if you were to bring somebody into your circle, they're going to go over on this side. In which case you gain any influence that they may generate. You get one normally, so we get one for him, and we're going to get one for him. So if we ever get to a place where we get to gain influence based on our circle, we'd be getting three at this point. We can also trigger abilities. So there's various icons on the bottom of a uh, colonist card. The hammer ones are triggered only when a specific space is used on the board. There's the purity symbol, which are triggered by a specific event that are listed on each card. There's the clock, which is an ongoing ability. And then there's the uh, pentacle, which is uh, always active as long as that uh, colonist is on the board, regardless if they're in a uh, circle or not. Looking through the cards that I have here, I actually didn't see any with the pentacle on there yet. I'm not sure if that's something they're going to be adding later or if it's just something that's not in this prototype. But uh, any of those would be in effect even when they're up here. And I forgot to fill that back in. Even when they're up here in play. So keep those in mind. As you arrest various people say we arrested him instead of adding him to our circle you're going to take him you're going to put him on this side slide it over just a little so it's still on camera the only thing that matters once things are on this side on the arrested board they're removed from the game basically is at the end of the game you're going to score victory points for how many people you've arrested as well as the property values down here so in this case he's going to be worth one victory point just for being arrested and three more victory points for his land and then any bonuses that apply due to family ties as well on top of that. So that's a pretty rough, quick look through and on how things play out. I didn't go into too much depth on there because this really isn't a how to play video so much. It's just a look at the game. The game itself plays really fun. They've added a little bit more complexity to it since the original prototype I played a while ago. It does make it a little bit of a steeper learning curve because of you have the village, uh, villager and township things you got to worry about. You got the family things, four and minus, that you got to worry about. But they're all there for a good reason. It's balancing issues. By limiting who you can bring into your circle and what family members you can have and not have in your group really changes the, um, the game to the point it eliminates a lot of the broken combos of the various colonist abilities. So it's definitely there for a good reason. It just takes a little bit longer to learn. Not that big of a deal in the end, though. The uh, very first time I ever played this, like I said before, was a very early prototype. And we had a lot of fun messing around with it, kind of learning the rules and playing off each other to uh, figure out what was going on. My daughter ended up winning and beating both me and the game's designer. So it was kind of funny. But uh, we did have a lot of fun messing around, especially with this newer version. There's a lot of cool new... Um, 
things to it. All of the artwork is somewhat finished now, so it's much more um, uniform and uh, much closer to a finished product than it was the first time. And I'll have to dig up and see if I can find any of those old pictures. Not that they matter anymore, but it was just kind of funny to see a game evolve like that. And um, I didn't really mention it too much, but a lot of the cards have various iconography on the bottom. Like we have John Proctor here. Well, there's various iconography on the bottom as to what they do. There's a line of text on there that also explains it. As well as an entire page in the rule book that explains all the special abilities for all the various colonists. And on top of that, you also get a reference card which explains the various tokens and what they do. As well as the uh, turn order and things like that. Pretty handy little thing. The game's going to continue going. People are going to recruit and arrest the various colonists. As you do, you fill them back in with these cards here in the different rows. When you run out of the prominent colonist deck, you start filling them in with regular colonists. So there's always going to be eight people out there available until you get to the bottom of the deck there and you draw one of those special cards, either the minister or the uh, governor's wife, at what point the game ends. And then you add up the victory points to see who's the winner. Overall, though, it's a really fun, quick little game. If you're into the historical period, it's very historically accurate. As I said before, all of the characters are actual names of actual people who were there when the events took place. The designer did a lot of research into things, into the various families, their properties, and things like that. It's all accurate as far as that goes. At the same time, you don't need to know a lot about the time period to understand the grasp of the game. It is essentially what the witch trials were. It is a witch hunt, and uh, you're out to gain power and influence for your family at the cost of singling out and accusing your rivals and things like that of being witches so that they're arrested and dealt with and removed, and you therefore gain their influence and their property into your circle of friends and family. And ideally the game portrays that very well and it does so in a way that really makes you think about what it was like to be around back then and have people accusing you of things. Meanwhile you're trying to protect your own family from such things. I like the worker placement uh, aspect of it where each person can only uh, occupy one space on the map so there's ideally some that are better than others. You want to be the first person to get those. But in some turns, you're like, I really need to, to generate influence. And I want to trigger some of my abilities. But if I wait and place my first guy, the next person in line might take that, uh, that uh, arrest icon that I need to arrest somebody. Or they might take the protection. And I really want to protect somebody because the person that's on my grievance card is up. And I want to protect them if I can. Things like that. So you really got to pick and choose. People fight over the uh, first player spot because not only do you get that protection token, but you also get to go first next time. So that's kind of an interesting run. Uh, spectral evidence becomes a really contested one to uh, take out those people who might be under. You, you get a guy with a five on his uh, colony card, takes five to arrest, and he's in somebody's circle. That's a bonus five there. So you're looking at 10 influence to arrest him. Things like that spectral evidence come in really handy as it gets rid of that uh, circle defense bonus. And basically cuts that in half. A lot of strategy in there on where to place your workers, when to trigger what abilities, when to save up your influence, when to spend it, things like that. Uh, who to recruit into your circle, who to, to arrest. Some people you want to arrest just because they're cheap, they're easy to throw in there, only cost you one influence, you get a victory point for having them in there. Other people you really want in your circle because their special abilities will really help in the little... Um, engine that you're building so you kind of build a, a resource engine up to uh, to generate the things you need at the same time there might be somebody who might be really good for the little um, the circle that you've built and works really well with the people but it also is worth three victory points for property and a victory point for arresting them so you gotta weigh that is he gonna be better in my circle or is he gonna be better arrested for that extra four points you're gonna get so, and then plus the bonuses on top of that, it can even be more than four. So, it, it's really a balancing act. There's, there's a lot of strategy involved there, which is really neat. So, as I said, if you're a fan of the period and a fan of the, the 
well, I wouldn't say a fan of the Salem Witch Trials, but if you're a history buff and you're into that, then definitely check this one out. Even if you're not, if it's just kind of a, a interesting worker placement game to, to try out. The game's actually going to be on Kickstarter January 19th, 2017 here. So if you're looking at this video and it's still pretty close to that, go over there and uh, check it out. You'll be able to see uh, the, the final version here. Like I said, this is a, a prototype. So some of these pieces and, and components are subject to change. Though they are pretty good quality. Right now, these are kind of homemade at home. They're not printed out. But like the tokens and everything are, are really nice quality. The cards are excellent quality. And um, I do remember that he was mentioned something about a... Um, Kickstarter stretch goal or something, maybe an add-on to get pewter figures in place of the uh, tokens. Not sure if that's still going to happen. You'll have to check out the Kickstarter to see that. But again, the Kickstarter is going to be on January 19th. So go check that out. There's going to be a link down in the description. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you in the next one.